The kid said I need to work on my uh, my introduction to these videos. He said I shouldn't just jump right into it, but I think people want to rather, I told him, I was like, I think people would rather just skip the pleasantries and just get right down to the reason why they clicked on the video. Focus stacking is a, is a technique that I use more and more often in, in, in many of my images. And I, uh, I posted a photo on Instagram and Facebook uh, last week, I believe, from a, um, a recent backpacking trip I was on. And I got a couple comments of, you know, how I, how I shot the image or did I focus stack it or not. And this, you know, it got, it got me thinking because this is an interesting image. You, you probably wouldn't think you need to focus stack this image because it's not a, a real grand vista. You know, this entire scene, foreground to background, is probably like 30, 40 yards at the most. And a lot of times you think of a focus stack scene as just very deep, you know, maybe uh, you know a mile, 20 miles away. But this image was the complete opposite of that. And you know, there's really two types of images that uh, you 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 would you know normally would focus stack. Of course, you have the type of image that is that very grand vista, and you could focus stack that image if you really wanted to go the extra mile. But if not, you could probably get away with it, not focus stacking it. So either way is really fine. But then you have other images like this one here that I shot where you absolutely have to focus stack it. I'll jump into Lightroom here so you can take a closer look. And the reason why is, you know, one, there wasn't, or the reason why I had to focus stack this, one, is because there's not a lot of available light. This was shot at sunrise. You can see the sun starting to peek through and there's moving water. So I really couldn't stop down to, you know, F11, F16, and focus on the, uh, the the stone in the foreground in order to get the background in focus. One, the foreground was too close to my camera, the background still wouldn't have been in focus. And two, there was very, very little ambient light available and it would have made my shutter speed three or four seconds, which would have ultimately lost all the detail in the water and the water would have just turned into like a soupy, milky mess, which I, I don't like that look at all. I always try and keep um, a, you know some detail in the water, not so much to where you freeze the water, but you know, I try and keep some detail in it, but also still show that it's uh, you know flowing water. So, what I ended up doing was um, shooting this image at at, at five six five point six, at one thirteenth of a second ISO four hundred. This was shot with my uh, sixteen to thirty five at twenty four millimeters, and I shot a total of um, three images for this focus stack series. Now, the the very first one, as you can see, all three of them down here. This one was focused on the immediate foreground. As you can see, it is perfectly focused. And as I move through the image, you'll notice that the, the mid-ground right here is out of focus and the background is completely out of focus as well. Now, if I look at my, my second image here, this is the image that I actually focused on the, uh, the, in, the, uh, the boulders in the middle of the image that were you know, covered in green moss. So if I zoom in here, Give my second a computer. Give my computer a second to catch up. <laughs> You'll see that this entire area is completely in focus. The stone in the front is now out of focus, and the background, of course, is out of focus as well. Now, my final image here. This is the image that I shot for the background, and you guessed it. The, the foreground and the midground are going to be out of focus, and the background is going to be perfectly sharp. And as you can see right here. Everything in the background, all the leaves and the trees are perfectly sharp. And as we move through the image, all the way down to the boulder in the immediate foreground, it's completely out of focus. So now that I have my entire focus stack series shot, and it doesn't have to be three images, you could shoot as many as you want. I usually, usually shoot three. Sometimes I might actually shoot five, but it, very rarely do I ever go beyond that. And once you have um, all, all your images loaded, you know, I always like to go ahead and put an initial edit on here, which you can you can see what I did for this particular image. And then if you're not familiar with how to sync an, an edit of one image across a series of images, I'll show you how to do that right now. It's real simple. We have the image right here that I put the edit on. Just hit shift and highlight all three or all, all the images in your focus stack series or your series two focus stack. Right click on the image that you have the edit on and go to develop settings and go to sync settings. You can just leave everything checked. These are all the individual items that you're telling uh, Lightroom that you want to synchronize and just hit synchronize. And every single one of these images now will have the exact same treatment applied. So now what we need to do is highlight all three of the images. Whoops, if I could, my computer could catch up. One, two, three, all three images 
we're going to right click and we're going to go up to the top and we're going to go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, this could take anywhere from 30 seconds. It could take you a few minutes, really depending on, like I said, the speed of your computer, but also if you have, you know, like nine or 15 images in your focus stack series, this could definitely take a few minutes to do. But ultimately what it's gonna do is exactly what, the, what you told Photoshop to do. It's gonna put a, each individual photo in your series into its very own layer so you can work with it that way. And so, uh, Photoshop right now is reading the individual photos right now. So it looks like it's already created one right here. And this is honestly probably the pro part of the process that takes the longest. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's almost done and we're ready now. So all three of the images are loaded in here. So what we wanna do is we're gonna highlight all three of them. We're gonna come up here to edit, auto align layers, and you can leave this set at auto and just hit okay. What this is going to do is in case, you know, one of your images, maybe your ball head started to slip a little bit or you bumped your tripod or a gust of wind came by, it's just going to uh, align all three of the images. And if there's any kind of movement at all, you'll be able to see it because there'll be a little bit of a white area around the edges. And as you can see, it looks like there was a little bit of movement. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go up here to crop. We're going to just bring this side in just a touch and do the same thing to the bottom like that and just hit OK. And now all three of the images are, are perfectly aligned. Once you have that done, we're gonna leave all three layers highlighted here. We're gonna go back to edit. We're gonna go to auto blend layers. You can leave this on stack images and hit OK. And what Photoshop is gonna do is going to blend in all the areas that are in focus versus all the areas that are out of focus for all three of the images. And it's gonna complete a mat or come, it's gonna create a master copy of all three of the images together, only using the perfectly sharp areas to create a final image that's perfectly sharp from the stone in the foreground all the way through the trees in the background, which is what you can see right now. So what we'll do is we'll zoom in here to 100% so you can take a look. And as you can see, the stone here is perfectly in focus. The midground here, perfectly sharp. And you guessed it, the trees in the background, perfectly sharp as well. And that's it. And what's also cool is you can actually see the individual masks that were created here. So if I untoggle or turn off the, the final image here, you can actually see the the, the, how the image was created. So this is the, the background area. It used almost all of that area that was in focus, and then you can just add it all and you know piece it all together by turning the layers on and off, just kind of like a puzzle. So uh, I don't know, I always thought that was kind of cool. And then your final image here is at the very top. So as you can see, it's, it's a very, very simple process to do. You know, probably the, the, the longest process of this entire, you know, focus stacking technique is really just loading the, the layers into Photoshop. It takes, you know, like I said, sometimes upward a minute, but actually stacking the images together, very, very simple to do and a very, very easy technique. So if you have any questions, as always, just leave me a comment below and I guarantee I'll get back to you. I hope the video was uh, informative and you're able to, uh, to get something out of it. It's actually a really fun technique once you get comfortable to uh, get comfortable using it and get comfortable with how you actually shoot the series of images. It's, uh, it's pretty simple to do and a lot of fun. So uh, as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you all next week. Bye.